Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. This is probably going to be the first video I've ever done where I talk about me playing sports. I'll get a lot of comments. Oh, this dumbass just sits in his room. He he's not a real athlete or whatever. Um, I am. I do, uh, I've played baseball every year since I was like five. Um, I, pl I play Little League. Now, uh, there's, there's a league called, called Babe Ruth. It's like associated with Cal Ripken or whatever. There's a 15 to 13 league, and then there's a 16 to 18 league. I had played in the 16 to 18 league the past few years. And just two days ago, we won the state tournament for the state of Indiana. But there are a lot of fun stories from throughout this whole season. And I, I could talk about baseball for forever. There are a lot of funny, cool stories from throughout our season that I want to share. I want to share with y'all about that. So... That's what this video is going to be about. So let's let me first start off by saying, I tell people I'm fans of Chicago sports teams, but people get confused when I tell them I live in Indiana. So here's basically what it looks like. So this is a map. Here's Chicago, right? Okay. I live in Dyer, Indiana, which is right here on the state line of Indiana and Illinois, but it's uh, but it's uh, what's it called? It's on the Indiana side. So we play all a bunch of teams from Northwest Indiana. Like, uh, we played Munster last year. They didn't have a team this year. We played two teams from Hammond. We played a team from Whiting. Uh, we played a team from. We played a bunch of teams from Crown Point. Uh, in the past, we played teams from Lowell. We didn't play Lowell this year. We played a team from. We played a team from Chesterton. We played a team from Valpo. We played a team from. Let me see. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to zoom in so there's more towns. We played a team from Highland. Um, we played, we played, we played a team from Lake Station. We played a team from Gary. We ba we played people, uh, from from all over the Northwest Indiana, Indiana area. So when people ask me if I'm on a travel team or not, I tell them yes, but it's kind of a lie. Um, okay, there there are there are travel teams and like in house teams. It it is an in house league, but we play everywhere we we play a bunch of travel teams and we beat a bunch of travel teams we play travel teams we beat travel teams and it's it, we're not only playing people from our immediate area we play people from all over all over the area so we are an in-house team but we're not it's it's kind of like a mix of, of both so there are three there are three teams from dyer there's one of pretty much all seniors and that was the team i was on it was all seniors um and then there was a team that's pretty much all juniors, and they're going to be all seniors next year, and they're going to be pretty damn good, I'll tell you that right now. And then there was another team with a bunch of people from, like, neighboring towns that didn't have a league. Like, there was a kid from Crete, Illinois. There was a kid from Sauk Village. There was, there was people from everywhere, and they kind of formed a team that, that could also play. So, so, so I'm, I'm going to take you through our season, right? I'm, I'm going to say this right now. We won a lot. and our, Okay, our final record was 21-4. and four. We were pretty good. Uh, I'm not trying to brag. Now, here's the thing, right? If we were to play, like, some of the full-time, like, travel teams from Indiana that travel to, like, Florida and Georgia and Tennessee for all these, like, national, like, PBR tournaments, we would get smoked. Like, if we played the Indiana Bulls, they're supposed to be the best travel team in Indiana, we would lose 30 to nothing. That's just that's just a fact. So, um, but, final record was 21-4. and four. I'm going to take you through game by game. Uh, and I posted these all on, I reposted them all uh, on Instagram. So our first win was against the other Dyer team that kind of had a group of, like, players from, like, wherever. And one of my friends was on that team, and they he said he had the, he, he, he's like, oh, my buddy's pitching this year, and he's real good. He's like, he's about to smoke you, we're about to beat you. I'm kind of like, is that right? So, and everyone knew who this guy was. He was pretty good. His name's Cole. Cole, he's one of my buddies. And they're all talking, like, they're like, oh, he's really good. He, we're about to not be able to score a run. I'm like, and here's the thing. I was pissed that because I'm like, you guys are already saying we're going to lose before we've even lost. And so I'm like, guys, he's not that good. Just go out there and hit the ball, okay? Well, he found out that I said he wasn't very good. He struck us out 11 times that game, okay? In the sixth inning, it was 1-1, one to one, okay? And he had 11 strikeouts. 
So it was one to one in the sixth. We play we play seven inning games. We let off. He walked the leadoff guy, and then I think the next guy got a single, and then our three hitter Mark comes up. Mark's a Mark's a stud. He pops one to deep center, and their center fielder lost the ball. Like he looked up, he started like running in, and he had no idea where the ball was, and it landed like twenty feet over his head. And he came all the way around for an inside the park home run, and then they pulled them, and then we scored another run. So we ended up winning our first game five to one. Okay, that was that was a fun game. To get on the board. Second game wasn't really a game. So there was a younger team that is a full time travel team. They're like I think they're like they were like a fifteen u team, but they go to like they go to Wisconsin, they go to Minnesota, they go they go everywhere to play games, and it's full of like basically the best like team players in the area. We had played them last year, and we smoked them last year. Um, but they had some pretty good players. The day we were scheduled to play, it was going to be like 30 degrees. And we were all like, shoot, where's some layers, folks? Anyway, they, they ended up saying that they didn't want to play because it was too cold. And we're like, well, if you are just saying you're not playing, we're like, that's, that's technically a forfeit. I'm like, fine, count it a forfeit. We're not coming. So we're like, Okay, so our second win wasn't really a win. It was a forfeit win. But what was funny is the next day they were playing the team we had just played, and it was 40 degrees. Oh, but that was good enough for them to play. So so we won uh, the second game. Uh, that wasn't We didn't actually play. Third game was against the Dyer team. That's all, that's all juniors, and they have some really good players. And we jumped out to a nine-run first inning. Nine-run first inning. And we're like, oh, game's over. They 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 can't hang. They're just they're just they're just not that good. Um, but then nine nothing becomes nine to two. And then it becomes nine to three. And it becomes nine to four. We're kind of like, do we get some runs? We ended up getting two runs back, and it ended up becoming eleven to four going into the last inning. Walk a guy here, single there. Walk a guy there. All of a sudden, this kid comes up. Hits a grand slam. It is now 11 to 8, and we're like, we are not blowing a 9 nothing lead. No, there's no way this is happening. So all my friends on the other team, they're like, Quincy, I know you're scared. I know you're scared. All my friends on the other team just started just started harassing me. And I just started, I just kept pointing at the score because we were still winning. Uh, we ended up winning 11 to 8, but that was a that game that game scared me. I thought we were gonna blow a nine nothing lead, but we did not. We won 11 to 8, 3 and 0. Our next game was against Whiting, and they weren't really that good of a team. They had they had say they had some good kids, but we beat them 12 nothing uh, the first game, and then we played. Here's what's funny that we that was at home. We were set to play them two days later at their place. And our coach, like our coach is my dad. Now I know you're saying, "Oh, he's the coach's kid. That's why he gets playing time." I literally have been benched like ten times this season, um, and I hit like seven on our team. Anyway, he's like, "All right, so we don't need to use because we had a bunch of games in a row. He's like, we don't need to use one of our really good pitchers." So he's like, "So this one kid, he had been like begging to pitch, and like he's not a pitcher. But he's like, coach, let me pitch, man. Just let me pitch." He's like, "All right, Mooch." Mooch is, his last name is Mooch. He's, we call him Mooch. He's like, all right, you're going to pitch this game. And so everyone was excited that he was getting to pitch. So we got to the game. And there was another game before us. And the players were like, they were, they were having some fun. They were like, they're like, he's going to pitch. And they're like, where is he? Because he was like late. They're like, is he not coming? And we told the other team, they're like, nah, he is not missing this game for the world. So he pitched, and we won 14-2. to So we're 5-0. and Next we played uh, – so next we played Crown Point. Now, Crown Point is uh, – show you on the map it's pretty close to the dire crop points like down here it's about 20 minutes away now they are usually considered the best in the area because they have these really nice fields and a lot of people that live there have a lot of money and they're considered like the best teams in the area they had four teams we had three usually most leagues have one we had three just because a bunch of people around us didn't have leagues so we had three they had four so we were kind of like, ooh, okay. And most of usually these teams are pretty good. So the first team we played, they had a really good pitcher on the mound. We struggled to kind of hit him, but we kind of hit him near the end. We squeaked out a win, four to two. So we're six and zero. Oh. And we kind of got the feeling at the start of the year because we were really good the previous year. We went, we went eighteen and six. And we're kind of like, we might not lose a game this year. They're like, I'm not. There's gonna be very few teams that could beat us. 
So we won 6-0. and Next game, we were, were like, we knew this was going to be one of our tougher games. We played this team called the Crown Point Dirtbags, and they're a travel team. They're Okay, they're a bit, they call themselves a travel team, but they're kind of just like us. But they had a bunch of people from Crown Point's high school team, and we knew it was going to be a pretty tough game. It was at home. We were hammering the ball. All game, we were hammering the ball and hitting it right to them every single time. It was so annoying. We couldn't get any runs on the board. We had people thrown out on the bases. They were really good at fielding. One of their one of their guys did a three-run home run that I'm not sure it's landed yet. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's landed yet. We were down 5 nothing going into the sixth of seventh innings, and we're kind of like, man, the undefeated season would have been cool, but we're probably not going to win this one. Anyway, base hit here, double there. We ended up scoring two runs in the fifth, in the sixth inning, and we had the we had runners on the corners. I was on first, another guy on third, and he got picked off at third to end the inning when we had the tying run of the play. And I was like, damn, that sucks, man. So now keep in mind, they know they can pick a guy off at third. Yeah. Top of the seventh, they don't score. So we're down five to two. We're like, we got to get some runs, man. They bring in their closer. This guy was throwing pretty hard. Walked the leadoff guy. Walked the second guy. Walked the third guy. They load up the bases with nobody out and we're still we're like okay let's we got the time run on first let's start getting some runs here now nine hitter base it up the middle one run scores it's five to three bases are still loaded next guy comes up base it and their center fielder overruns the ball he overruns the ball and we start running around we tie the game the winning runs at third Ground ball to short. They throw home. They get the guy at home. And now we got runner on third, one out. Next guy strikes out. So we got runner on third, two outs, tie game. Now here's the thing. The game probably would have just ended in a tie. Um, but sometimes, depending on the ump, sometimes they let you play extra innings. Sometimes they don't. Um, so we're like, all right, fine. Got to get a base hit here. And I was on deck, and I really didn't want to have to hit him. Like, please end the game now so it doesn't have to come down to me. That is how... That is how baseball players think. They do not want to have the game come down to your shoulders. Like, hey, if we can just get ahead and end it before I have to bat, that'd be perfect. Okay. Guy on third. They send a pickoff attempt to third. Safe. Send another pickoff attempt. Safe. And our guy on third isn't very fast. Michael will tell you he's not very fast. But he's, like, barely getting off the bat. I'm like, they better stop picking off. They're going to throw one away one time. They try to pick off a third time. He completely overthrows the third baseman. Ball gets up the line, and we won 6-5 to five after being down 5 nothing. So we're now 7-0. and oh. And we were like, how did we win that game, dude? We had we had no idea how we won that game. But, I mean, that's you got to focus on the batter in those spots, man. You can't be picking off the third. But we knew, and we were, we were scheduled to play this team again. And we're like, hey, we got to win against them. They were, they were a real good team. Second game was against the third Crown Point team. Now, here's this Crown Point team was all, like, younger kids. Remember how I said it was 16 to 18? They pretty much put all the young kids, all the 16-year-olds, on one team. And it kind of wasn't really fair. We beat this team 15 nothing because um, they put all the younger kids on one on one team. So, so, we, so eight no. Then we played a third Crown Point team. Now, this Crown Point team, none of their kids are from Crown Point. All their kids were from Lowell, which was south of Crown Point. And we played this exact same team last year. And they they were from Lowell. But they were Crown Point something or other. But they're all from Lowell. We beat them 7-3. to Pretty good team. Um, in that game, Mark, who I said was a stud, he was a single shy of the cycle. He got the home run, the triple, and the double, but he didn't get the single. He went three for four with all those and a strikeout. He stole home that game, too, and he hit a home run about, like, 400 feet. So, 7-3, to 9-0. and Next, we're playing a team from Hammond. There are two teams from Hammond. This team is called the Outlaws, and I had a bunch of people that I knew on that team. They were pretty good. But here's the thing about them. They're only good when they're losing. They will let you get out to like 5 nothing, 6 nothing lead, and then they'll come back on you. So you got to be careful when you play them. We jumped out to a 5 nothing lead, and it was 6-2 to two 
in like the fifth inning. Walk a guy here, make an air there, single there. All of a sudden, they were down to their last out. It was six to five. Ground ball to our shortstop. He ranges into the hall. He throws. He spikes it in the dirt. Our first baseman tries to scoop it. Kicks the ball up over the fence and two runs score. We're losing six to seven. And we're like, oh no, dude. We're like, we're about to, we're about to. Anyway, in the bottom half, hit there, walk there. We ended up loading the bases with one out. And a, we're down one and I come up to hit. And I drew a walk. And we tied the game at seven. Our next guy with nobody out, or with one out, it was nobody out or one out, also drew a walk. They completely collapsed last inning. We won eight to seven. We're ten and oh. Okay. Next game we're playing Valparaiso on the road. Now here's the thing. If you're short players, like we have a bunch of people that had we had fifteen players on our team. But, but one of our players, Vince, you mean you you guys know Vince. You've seen him in a bunch of videos. He was on the team. He broke both his wrists and bruised three of his ribs. Not playing baseball, playing golf. Playing golf. Because he was golfing with one of his buddies, and it was raining, and he let his friend borrow his club, and the club slipped out of his hand, and it got caught in a tree. So he climbs up the tree to get it, and falls out of the tree, landing like a cat, and he broke both his wrists, and, uh, and bruised like four ribs. And we had players who worked. There were grad parties a bunch of the time that people had to go to. So we would be short players. You're allowed to borrow players from, like, you're allowed to borrow players from other teams in the league. So what we would do is we would borrow, like, one or two players from the younger team. In this game for Valpo, we only had five players from our actual team, and we borrowed a bunch of other subs. The other coach didn't care or whatever. We beat this team 11-1. to Next, we were playing Boone Grove. Now, Boone Grove on the map is it's south of Valparaiso it's it's over here and in this stretch I think we we had to play I, I remembered it we had to play 12 games in 14 days those previous two games we played Hammond and then Valpo back to back and then this Boone Grove game was back to back to back so we started some like some of our not as good pitchers and this Boone Grove team jumped out all over us we were down four nothing in the second inning so I came out, and I'm going to go deep in depth. This was my best game this year, okay? I'll show you my stats eventually, because um, I have all of our stats on Game Changer. But, so I came up to lead off the second inning, ripped a double to the gap. Um, I eventually ended up stealing third, and then we had first and third, and our guy on first was stealing second. So I went home, because they threw it down. They tried to cut it off, threw me, beat it out at home. So I stole home. And it was 4-1. to one. Ended up getting another run across. It's 4-2. to two. In the second inning, bases loaded, two outs. For my boy Austin, who's also going to IU. Cracks a grand slam over the wall. 6-4. to four. Okay. Boone Grove doesn't go away quietly. Uh, I think they ended up tying the game at one point. Um, hold on. I'm going to find Game Changer. They ended up tying. I think they tied it at 6. Um, hold on. Uh, they got another run back in the third to make it six to five. I came up with the third with runners on second and third. Base hit, scored two more runs. I ended up scoring again on a double. It was nine to five after the third inning. They scored two in the fourth, making it nine to seven. We didn't score in the fourth. They didn't score in the fifth. Then we put up three runs in the fifth to make it twelve to seven. I got another base hit. I went three for three of that game. I went three for three with a double, two singles, two RBIs, two runs scored, three stolen bases, one of them stealing home. That was my best game uh, by far this year. Was when was when we played Boone Grove. Uh, so twelve, we won twelve to seven. Now we're twelve and zero, and we're thinking, how long can, can we keep this up? So then we got to a part of the schedule where we're playing some of the tougher teams. Remember that Crown Point we had to come back, Crown Point team we had to come back against. We had to play them again on the road. And this game literally had a, there was a tornado warning for our era. There, remember that, you, you may have seen the clip of you Darvish warming up while, the, while there's a tornado siren going off in Chicago. It was like that over every town near Chicago. The clouds were black and it was like 
5 p.m. We're like, are we sure it's safe to play? And the umps were like, yep, we're playing. They were like, fine, I, I guess we're playing. So this Crown Point team was probably the team we were the most evenly matched throughout the entire year. Uh, we were down one nothing after the first. We scored two runs in the third. They scored two runs in the third. Anyway, it was 4-3 to three going into the last inning. We were down one. We got a few hits here. We're two outs, runners on second and third. Our guy rips one over the center fielder's head. We take the lead, four to three. Bottom of the seventh. Walk here, double there, double to the gap. They end up tying the game. Runner on third, base hit. They win via walk off. So we played this team twice. We beat them on a walk off when they blew a lead. They beat us on a walk off when we blew a lead. So we were really evenly matched with this team. Lost five to four. Okay, fine, whatever. 12 and one. Our next game was against this team called the Rockets, and I know their coach. I'm buddies with their coach. What up, Steve? I don't know if they're watching this video. We did not play. So they scored one run on the first. Fine. Uh, I got caught stealing at one point. I was saved by a mile. Ump called me out. Um, I completely got around the tag. Uh, I wasn't very happy. They scored six runs in the third. And part of the reason was is we couldn't get an out. We kept making errors. Uh, the, the way the field is set up, so I'm a, I play left field. That's my primary position. The sun was directly, like, you looked up and all you would see is just the sun. It, it I, so those times, probably to left field, I'm like, I literally couldn't see the ball. I pulled one of these, I literally started, like, walking around and the ball hit me in the shoulder. I didn't even see it. Okay. And then later in the game, the same thing happened. I, like, ducked because I didn't want to get hit. And the ball went like over my head. I, I was, oh, I was, I was so mad. So anyway, it's my turn to hit, right? And they had a really good pitch on the mound, just mowing us down. And uh, so I'm up, and I swing and miss, whatever. And I'm, I'm in a bad mood. I, I'm not, four of those runs are via me not being able to see the ball. I'm, I'm in a bad mood. Okay, I strike out. I don't. Have you guys seen the Anthony Rendon ejection, where? He looks at strike three. He was kind of on the corner, kind of like went like that with the bat. Didn't say a word. He just kind of went like that. And the ump goes, you're good. And he's like, what did I even do? Okay. That's pretty much what I did. I kind of like dropped the bat a little bit. I was upset. And the ump goes, you're good. I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I literally couldn't believe it that I got tossed because, because of that. I was like, wow. So I'm like, dang. I guess I'll go home now. Oh, wait. I carpooled to the game with my friend, so I had to, I had to wait in his car. Um, we ended up losing. It was 7 nothing when that happened. We mounted a pity comeback near the end. We ended up losing 8-4. to four. Um, So, anyway. So, yeah. Whatever. Now, here's the rule. It depends. I think it depends on the severity of your ejection. I think they said if you get ejected, you, you, you can't play the next game. So I'm like, great, I'm suspended for a game now. That's that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, umpire. I literally talk so I am an umpire, right? I talked to a bunch of other umpires, and here's what one of them told me. They're like, he probably knew you were an umpire and he thought you should be like above the rules or whatever. I don't know. It was bad. Whatever. I got thrown out of the game. So but I'm like, oh damn, I can't play the next game. So our next game was against Probably the second best, or th probably the best team, we had, one of the best teams we had to play all year. The Hammond Hurricanes. And it was basically everyone from Hammond High School. It was basically their high school team. Now, I can't remember. I think someone told me that the rules, like, you could only have, like, four people from the same high school baseball team. They had ten. It was basically their, their high school team. So we're like, this is going to be a, a tough game. But, man, I can't play. So remember how I said I was I'm an umpire too. I basically on games we didn't on days we didn't play I would just ump wherever anyone needed me to. Well, there's an umpire shortage. I don't know if you guys there's shortages of basically everyone. So no one wants to work. Uh, there's, you guys know the deal. And it's been like this for a while now. So n we didn't have anyone to ump our game. So my dad's like, well if he can't play, he can ump, and. He's like, I expect you to call the game you would any other game. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rig the game for, for our team. So my dad 
called up the other coach and was like, hey, basically it's either a kid on our team umps or no one umps and there's no game. He's like, fine, let him up then. So, all right. And now I'm like, please be like a blowout. So I don't have to like, because as an ump, you know, you don't want to impact the game. You don't, you don't want to have to make a borderline call that like decides the game. So I'm like, please be a blowout. Like I went there. I was very uncomfortable. I didn't want to have to do it. So anyway, the team we're playing, they jump out to a lead. Uh, they were hitting the ball all over the place. It ended up being four to one. Uh, hold on. It ended up being being four to one in the uh, in the fifth inning. Okay. In the fifth inning, we get a base. Uh, I'm saying we as I'm umping. Obviously, I want my team to win, but like I can't make a call that can help that, right? But like if they rip, a, I'm I, I, like if they rip a ball to the gap, obviously I'll be happy if, if that happens. But like I'm not gonna like shrink the strike zone and let them walk. Like I can't do that. I I have more integrity than that. So anyway, we our team mounts a comeback, and it's four. We score four runs. We take the lead five to four. Okay. Now here's the rule. Here's what here's our league. Different different fields and leagues have different rules. But what it is, is like you can't start a new inning after an hour and 45 minutes. So a lot of our games will only be five innings, six innings, seven innings, or whatever. A lot of times you can't score a run. You can't, you can't, uh, what's it called? Can't play anymore. So Hammond is pitting. They have a runner on second and third. They have a runner on first and second with one out. Hit a ground ball to our team's third baseman. He tags third. Now here's the thing. Here's what was also bad. I was the only umpire on the field. Usually, it's you and a base ump. Because you got to focus on balls and strikes. They can focus on the rest of the field. Call runners safer out. I was the only ump. Now, here's the thing. You get paid more if you're the only ump. But it is a lot harder. Okay. So, I have to look at third to make sure he hits third. He's out at third. Now, normally, I would run out to get a better view at first. But it's a little too late for that. He's already almost there. He throws it across the diamond. Now, the way our field is set up, when the sun sets, it is, like, right behind first base. And our field gets really dusty. So, I just see an enormous cloud of dust and sun and, like, a ball and, like, a guy at first base. I literally could not tell if he was safe or out. I had that bad of a view. But I'm like, I think he was out. So, I'm like, he's out. And it got everyone out of the inning. Their parents and coaches start going nuts they were so upset because at this time Ward had gotten out that i was on the team and they were so mad one of the parents just started yelling and there's oh you need to get out of everything that happens i'll give you a tip if you ever umpiring if a coach or you can't really do it with coaches but if a parent is just sitting there yelling at you cursing at you saying you don't know what you're doing you don't know the rules blah, 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 blah. Don't even look at them. Don't, because what they want you to do is look at them and argue with them. Don't even look at them. Just sit there, act like you don't hear them. And I promise you, they'll usually stop. This guy didn't stop, but it'll usually work. Okay. So I have to tell the coach that time limit's approaching. That's what you're supposed to do. So I was like, I told the coach, I was like, hey, it was like an hour and like 30 minutes. I'm like, hey, you got to get three outs in 15 minutes to start the next inning. He's like, well, we should still be in the inning because you, you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, fine, whatever, dude. So what our players start doing is they start taking their time when they're coming up to bat. And this pitcher couldn't throw a strike, so he brings in a new pitcher. That takes time. So eventually, we hit the time to where you can't start a new inning. So I said, hey, that's that's the game. Uh, no new inning after hour 45 because that's the rule. And I got the hell out of there because I thought their parents were going to kill me so we w our team won i didn't do anything and when i got home my dad's like i knew you didn't try to he's like that guy at first was probably safe but he's like i know you didn't do that on purpose he's like i know you're not trying to blow the game and oh everyone on our team knew that too they're like that's not the reason they lost so that's a win 13 and 2 uh anyway next we played a team from chesterton you keep in mind this stretch was like almost all in a row we played a team from chesterton Played a really good game, beat him three to one. They were a really good team. Pitchers duel three to one. We won. 
Next game was against that Crown Point team from Lowell. We played them again, and we beat them 11-6. to Brought out the bats. We pitched a bunch of, like, a guy that wasn't very good. Okay, so anyway. Next, we played Highland. Now, we knew Highland was going to be pretty damn good because there was, a na there was, like, a national tournament, and they actually qualified for the national tournament and then won, like, the regional tournament. They actually went to Mobile, Alabama for the Babe Ruth World Series. But we we started off hot, scored a run in the first, two runs in the third. They scored one in the fourth, but it was it's it's four to one, and it so it's it's four to one. Anyway, hit here, hit there, air there. They end up scoring three runs in the sixth. No runs were scored in the seventh, but we were but we were before their time limit or whatever. So they're like, guess we're playing the eighth inning. We couldn't score in the eighth inning. They end up pushing a run across in the eighth. They won via walk-off, five to four. We lost that game. Next, we had to play that Hurricanes team again, the team that thought I screwed them over. And I'm like, I'm about to get thrown at this game. I literally like didn't want to go to this game. They were mad that they thought we had screwed them over. They scored six runs in the first, three runs in the second, a run in the third. It was 10 nothing after the third inning. That was our worst game. We made a bunch of errors and stuff. It was it was just it was just a bad game. It was a really bad game. We ended up losing 12 to 2. I mean, you have games like that. You have we yeah, you have games where you get blown out. We lost 12 to 2. So at this point, we are 15 and 4. I'm like, that's that's pretty good. So next, we're playing one of the Crown Point teams we had played earlier. Now, this is a funny game. Um, we, we, our pitcher on the mound, Chris, Chris is a great pitcher. He was shutting him down. They could not touch him. Chris is a guy, he like, he can barely throw 70, but he's got a great curveball. He keeps hitters off balance. You don't need to throw 90 miles an hour to strike people out and be effective. He's a real crafty pitcher. I love Chris. We scored a run on the third, run on the fourth, but it's like two nothing. We're like, we should be killing this team, man. One of our guys ends up hitting a three run home run. It's five nothing. And here's what's funny. Their coach was complaining after, like, every call. And, like, they had, like, no grounds to make a bad call. So here's the here's – a, here's a, and he, he yelled at us because we were too loud after we had a home run. We weren't even that loud. Anyway, I ended up getting a base hit. I get to second. One of our guys gets a base hit, but it's like a floater to right. And I was stealing out on the pitch. And I didn't know if it was going to get caught or not. So as I get to third base, I look to see if it's about to get caught. And it drops. And I realized I am past third base. And I didn't touch third base. So I had to go back. And our whole time was like, what are you doing? They started just, everyone in our dugout was screaming at us. What are you doing? You stupid idiot. Why can't you touch third base? And their coach got mad at us because he thought we were yelling at their team. And we're like, dude. They were yelling at me because I'm an idiot at missed third base. So anyway, we end up scoring or whatever, and their coach goes, you know, we're not playing anymore. We're done. So we're like, all right. We won 6 nothing in that game. Yeah, so we're like, fine, whatever. Next, we played a team from Gary, and here's basically when it comes to Gary in any sport, they're either really, really good or really, really bad. And we looked at this team, and we're like, they look pretty good. But we, I think, this could have been one of our best games all year. I mean, we, we scored runs, we made timely hits, and we did our Michael, our best pitcher, shut it down. We won eight to one. That was great. Next, we were playing the other dire team. Now, here's the thing: we played the other dire team the previous year and this year, and it was always a close game. But they could never beat us. It would, we would always find a way to win. We no hit them one time. I mean, and they basically. They didn't care how they did in the tournament, which this was the last regular season game before the state tournament. So they wanted to beat us bad. So they put, knowing the tournament's coming off, they put their best pitcher on the mound. We started Chris, okay? And when I tell you nobody could hit the ball, nobody could hit the ball. Um, Koob, you may have seen him on a video before. He was the starter for the other team. In five innings, he gave up one hit. You know who had that one hit? this guy i would i made sure i let him know that i ruined his possible no hitter he's like i can't i've always had his number too he's like i can't get your ass out it pisses me off but anyway we couldn't score 
in this game. We brought in our best pitcher in relief. They brought in one of their best pitchers in relief, and it was scoreless through seven innings. Now, remember I said you can't start a new inning after hour 45. Well, this game had been going by so fast. They're like, guess we're playing the eighth inning. They don't score any runs in the eighth. So it's the bottom of the eighth, and I'm set to lead off. And my dad goes, he goes, you're laying down a bunt down the third baseline to lead off this inning. So I'm like, okay. But then my he, my dad goes out to coach first base. And the assistant coach is like, hey, I want you to swing away. He's like, I want you to put one in the gap. And then I'm going to have Vince bunch you to third. And I'm kind of like, I'm getting conflicting information. And I'm like, I'm going to listen to my dad because I don't want to have to go home and have him be like, why did you listen to me? So anyway, first pitch. Bunts it down the third base line. It is Perfect. I beat it out to first. Lead off guys on. I steal second. First pitch, not even think it steals second. Got it. Our next guy walks. Now Vince is up. Vince shows bunt. Their third baseman charges. There's no one at third. I sprint to third. I take third. We got it in business now. So now Vince is up. He bloops one between the pitcher and the third baseman. And I have a pretty big lead. And I see it up in the air. I'm like, I don't think they're going to catch that. I run home. I dive home. Now, apparently, what ended up happening is the ball rolled down, rolled towards the line. But there was no, no one had drawn the chalk out for the line. So there was no baseline. So the guy picked up the ball thinking it was foul. And the ump called it fair. So they said we won. So everyone on the other team was like, y'all won one nothing on a foul ball. And I'm like, hey, man. And my dad's like, I thought it was fair. And everyone on our team was like, I thought it was fair. But they were not very happy about that. But it was second and third with nobody out. We were we were bound to score even if it was a foul ball. So we won one nothing. That was one of my favorite wins of the year, especially since I scored the only run. I was, I was, I was pretty proud about that. Now, when it comes to Babe Ruth, there is a state tournament where it's just a bunch of teams from throughout the state. And there's a national tournament, which has teams like, so for ours, it was the the Ohio Valley is all these other teams. So there was a qualifier for the Ohio Valley against a bunch of, like, I think the team, that Highland team that beat us was in there. That Crown Point team we split with was in there. That Rockets team that beat us, they were in there. But here's the thing. If you win, we thought we had a really good chance to win the Ohio Valley. But if we won the Ohio Valley, the Babe Ruth World Series is in Seattle. We wouldn't have been able to go to Seattle. That wasn't that wasn't going to be an option. No one was going to take that much time off of work and we didn't have the we just didn't have the funds to go to Seattle. And a bunch of other teams thought the same way. So they're like, "We're just going to do the state tournament." Now, that, remember that Crown Point team I was talking about? They ended up winning the Ohio Valley Regional. I, I think they're playing in Seattle this uh, this week or whatever. Um, so they ended up winning the Ohio Valley Regional, but we just did the state tournament. So the state tournament had seven teams. It was us, the Younger Dyer team. Um, Valpo. Remember I said we played Valpo earlier in the year? They were there. Um, that team from Whiting, they were there. Uh, who else? The, the, remember that? So there were two teams from Hammond. The Hammond team that we beat eight to seven, not the team that hated me. And then there was a team from Remington, which is outside West Lafayette. We didn't play them this year, but they they had a pretty good team. And then a team from Plainfield, Indiana. Now everyone from our everyone from up here knows Plainfield, Illinois, because it's very close to the Chicagoland area. Where it's right over here. Here's Plainfield, Illinois. See so how yeah, it's pretty close to Dyer. Everyone thought. But no, 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 no. That was not the Plainfield team playing. The Plainfield team was from Plainfield, Indiana, which is outside of Indianapolis. Let me see if I can find it. It is right there. It is three hours away, and they were bringing a team all the way up to Dyer, Indiana. Basically, what ended up happening is they were supposed to host the state tournament. Like, they were the team that, that they were going to say. But... There aren't, but no one from up here was going to be able to go down there. Like I said, it, we we couldn't like we couldn't get a hotel. No one was taking that much time off of work. We're like, it's not going to happen. So the guy was like, well, if all the teams that are going to come, because basically most of the really talented teams in Indiana are up by us. So they're like, well, if they're not going to be able to get enough teams to play a tournament because all the teams up here. They're like, we can just move it up here. So we ended up hosting the state tournament. They were not too happy that they got their state tournament taken away. But anyway. 
So they had a guy draw out the team, and we actually ended up getting the buy for the tournament. They had a guy draw out names from a hat for the matchups, and it was since it's seven teams, eight would have been ideal, but there was only seven. One got the buy, and it ended up being us. Okay. Our first game was against Valpo, and we had beat them 11-1 to in the regular season. Not much different here. Beat them 10 nothing. So then, um, so we started with this guy, Neil. Now, Neil, Neil has like a crazy work schedule. He works nights. He, work, he'll work, he works like 12 hours a day, and he works like night shifts. It was hard for him to get to very many games, but he was probably our best pitcher when he was there. So he pitched the first game, shut him out. Now, here was the tournament rule everyone was under the impression of. You can pitch seven innings. A single player can pitch seven innings over a two-day span. So we won Friday. And we weren't scheduled to play until Saturday. So that would mean that Neil could not pitch any, and then he could pitch all seven on Sunday. So we're like, well, we can just pitch Neil again, because Neil said he wasn't going to be there on Monday. The championship would have been on Monday. Anyway, so then that Plainfield team ends up getting to the game against us. And this Plainfield team is pretty good. They were they were one of the better one of the best teams we played all game. We struggled against their pit starting pitcher. We couldn't, we couldn't hit him or whatever. One of their guys hits a two-run home run off of Neil, but Neil was shoving the whole game. He pitched all seven innings, struck out 12 guys. He was shoving the whole game. We scratched a run across in the fifth, and we scratched a run across in the sixth. So it's tie game, bottom of the seventh. Austin comes up, cracks one, walk-off home run in the semifinal. We are moving to the championship. It was really exciting. We all went nuts. It was great. After the game, the playing field coaches come up to my dad. And here's the thing. My dad was a tournament director since no one else is going to be able to do it. Our, and they had tried, and basically the, they can, the, uh, the tournament director can rule on any protests unless it involves that team. Then you got to go to the district director. So they come up, they're protesting the game. I'm like, well, that's great. Basically what they said is they're like, Neil, Neil couldn't, you, you used an illegal pitcher. They're like, Dad's like, no, we didn't. He's like, you didn't pitch any innings yesterday. He's like, no, the rule is seven innings for every two games. And you guys have only played one game. He was only allowed to pitch three innings. Or two, because he pitched five or whatever. And we're kind of like, okay. Th th thanks for protesting after you lost. I'm sure you didn't have a problem with it while you were winning. So they come up protesting the game. And basically, we were under the pressure. We're like, oh, we're screwed. They're gonna the they're gonna call, they're gonna call the district director. They're gonna say you guys cheated. They get the win. Here's the thing though, when it comes to protesting a game, I know this as an umpire. Thank God I haven't been a part of a game that's been protested. That seems like it would have been a nightmare. You can't protest once the game is over. So here's what ended up happening. The rule was seven innings for every two games. So we accidentally let Neil pitch too long. But here's the thing. You have to notify the umpires while the offense is going on. So Neil's only supposed to pitch two innings. So once he comes out for that third inning, he pitches the third inning, you say, hey, they have an illegal pitcher, There's, then we would have had to forfeit. But they were like, oh, we, we can get a free win even if we lose. But you can't protest when the game's over. So they called they called the district. My dad called. They, we, they both called the district director. And he's like, tough. Game's over. He's like, you can't protest when the game's over. So then they started calling every single commissioner they knew until they got the answer they liked. They ended up getting the head of Indiana Babe Ruth. They called him up. And he goes, tough. Game's over. You waited too long. And they started cursing him out, calling him every name in the book. Now, here's the thing. They got sent to the loser's bracket, but if they won their loser's bracket game, they would have gotten to play us in the championship, but they would have had to beat us twice. And they started, well, their their league president said, he literally told my dad, he's like, you better hope we don't get to play you because your players' lives are in danger. We're going to throw at them. And we're like, oh, you're going to throw at us? Okay. Now, here's the thing. I hope I get thrown at. I will take my free base. I will steal second. I will steal third. And I will make you regret it. So they were like, oh, we're going to throw them. So they have to play the other the other Dyer team. made their they, The other Dyer team lost in the first round, but they they got all the way through the loser's bracket. They won like four games in a row. And they ended up playing this team. Well, this team wins. They beat them 2-0. So they get to play us in the championship. And 
it's like, okay, well, we have gotten threats that we're going to get thrown at. So, the police were at the game. Anyway, so it's time for the championship game. Now, I hadn't played very well in the first, in the first two tournament games. I went, 0 for, I went 0 for 2 in both games, and I got subbed out in both of the games. So, I'm like, I got to show up now. And since and we sit and so we had Michael on the mound, and we scored a run in the in the championship game. We scored a run in the first. Uh, what's it go? Okay, we scored a run in the first. They scored a run in the second. Um, no runs in the third. And here's what was really bad: they had runners on second and the fourth. They had runners on second and third. Fly ball to me. I'm ranging back. I think I have it at the wall. And I dropped it. I literally dropped it, and a run scored, and I was so mad. I was really upset that I had let that run, that I had let that happen. So I'm like, dang it, man. So, and I'm due to hit next thing, and I'm like, oh my god, I was so mad because I really didn't want to have to play this team again. They were so, their players were cool, but their coaches were so annoying. They complained about everything. Anyway. So we end up tying the game. Our leadoff hitter gets a double. Our next guy gets a single. So we tied the game. Now I'm batting, and they brought in a new pitcher. And all my teammates were like, hey, man, pick yourself up. Get a hit here. And that's exactly what I did. I pounded one up the middle, I, and, I, and I got a base hit. Anyway, our guy on third, he didn't score. He got from second to third. While he started, like, clapping, their coach complained to the ump and tried to protest that we were clapping. And the ump was just like, he can do that. <laughs> anyway, our guy, Vince. Vince, who's, he missed a month because of his broken wrist thing. He's back now. Fly ball to left, tags up. I get to third. I dive in. They throw it away. I scored. I was so hyped. We got up 4 to 2. In the fifth, we scored eight runs. Eight runs. And at that point, the, the mercy rule is 10 runs after five innings. It's 12 to 2 in the fifth inning. The game's over. Anyway, as soon as we score our 12th run, these coaches are walking up to the umps with a book, and I'm like, here we go again. These guys are going to try to find a way to protest or whatever. Here's what they ended up protesting. They protested the fact that we didn't have a physical roster present. Like you, like you have to have a book with all your players. That is not a rule anymore. It used to be you had to have that. But in 2018 or 2019, when, you know, people use the internet, they said you don't need it anymore. You just have to have to have it uploaded on a file and you have to submit it to, like, a database. Like, before the season starts or whatever. And that's what we did. We had all of our players in a file or whatever. This protest and discussion went on for 40 minutes. They would not let it go. So eventually, they, their coaches were so annoying, dude. They tried to complain about everything. They had multiple coaches that tried to fight us in the parking lot. Because here's what's funny. When they protested the first time, someone was like, Quincy, what are they doing? I said, oh, they're protesting because they lost, which is what they were doing. And their coach looked at me and started cursing at me and saying, that's not what we're doing, man. Learn the rules. I'm like, okay, you could tell me I don't know the rules. Don't lie to me. Don't tell me you're not protesting because you lost as you're protesting because you lost. So they're trying to do it again. And the umps are just like, that's not a rule, dude. They ended up calling the district director again. District director was like, these these guys, man. They're like, no, you, the game's over. You guys win. Anyway, before they left, they yelled at my dad, cursed at him for like the fifth time this weekend, and they said, our lawyers will be in contact with you. They are filing a lawsuit because they lost a baseball game. I kid you not. That is, I can't really, there's a, a lot of more things I can say, but I might get in trouble if I say it. All I can say is that they're <laughs> filing a lawsuit because they lost a baseball game. But anyway, we won the state tournament. With a 21 and 4 record. I hope it. God, this video is. I didn't even realize how long I've been talking. This is a 50 minute video. My God. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, man. I might upload clips. I might upload like a video of just clips from our season. But, but yeah, guys. Uh, hope, hope you had fun. Man, if you made it to the end of this video, um, you're a real one. I don't think anyone made it this far, but. 
they're filing a lawsuit because they lost. But I love y'all, and uh, I, I will see you uh, next time. Hope you enjoy this. But th this is my last season playing baseball. Unless I can find a team to play on in Bloomington. Um, intramural softball. But yeah, it's my last season of baseball. Hope you guys enjoyed this, this little series of stories. Love y'all. See you later.